Hello Tubesters and welcome back to this uh, third instalment uh, this is about number three or four attempts at this every time I try and uh, pick a paintbrush up we've had gardeners turn up a few doors down and obviously hit strimmers and mowers and different people bawling and shouting in the street <laughs> horns going off, you name it right, what you have to do to try and make a video I said on the last video we'd be starting the the actual um, canteen and things like that but I think we'll get some layers with all the creases we'll actually get a base layer of uh, sky grey on these trousers I mean you could use uh, white but obviously the trousers are going to be white on the background and and obviously we can put our paint up uh, paintbrush we can put our uh, hair dryer on it <coughs> but uh, I think by the time we've uh, we faffed around with the canteen and that this base layer should be dry as we're going on a grey and especially as I've used um ghost grey uh, brush primer in places obviously with all these deep folds the spray wasn't getting it you know your automotive primers are uh, great um, but obviously unlike say an airbrush we've got a bit of stuff sticking up there um, unlike a, an airbrush obviously you can't get into all the nooks and crannies really not without using a whole tin of the stuff so um, I went over it with uh, with the Vallejo uh, primer which they do say can go through an airbrush and fair enough I'm fairly novice on an airbrush but I I had nothing but uh, trouble with it when I tried it um, it's okay for, for brushing on uh, but even brushing on I'd advise you to check for, for bubbles that pop up when you're brushing it on and make sure you blow all around that area just to obviously break up the bubbles because once they're set in you more or less have to rub that area down and start again because it like leaves you like a little volcanic crater. It's the best way I can think of describing it. Now, overnight, I've been looking at different uh, different reference uh, photographs for these. Uh, period photographs show different uh, length, uh, different widths of stripe. Um, obviously, I can't really gauge the colours from them, but um, you know they tend to be they tend to be different uh, widths of, of stripe uh, so you could if you wanted to go for some really thin stripes um, you know, there's pros and cons for that uh, aesthetically uh, they don't look as good as uh, as a broader stripe where you can get some nice highlights and low lights in them and it makes those those uh, those stripes really pop out um, but they tend to be easier to do because obviously the more you the more you attempt to put your stripe on wider you normally do a couple of I, I use a thinner brush and do a couple of couple of lines um, and you can obviously also always go off course uh, now when it comes down to looking at the reenactor photographs they had a um, slight you know difference in color some of them were dark stripes and some of them were light stripes I'm, I must confess the ones I'd already planned to do in my head were the light stripes um, I just remember them from you know over the years so um, that's what I'm going to do with these we're going to have a slightly broader stripe uh, doing a broader stripe obviously you can um, It'll take, you know, it'll be quicker for you and probably slightly neater. The only problem is we're doing a broad stripe. Uh, we're not obviously replicating with our small figure here. It's it's extremely hard to represent maybe all the stripes that you'd seen on some reenactors, you know, uh, photograph. Um, so you've got to be careful that you don't just end up with three stripes, four stripes down the leg where where it looks, you know, almost as if the. <laughs> Well, not that the stripes aren't there, but there's there's not enough, if that makes sense. Um, so well, we've got some bubbles coming up there. It's one problem I don't particularly want to 
keep blowing on the f when I'm trying to shoot a video, but uh, that's what I normally do, is just blow on them and they disappear. So that's usually my go-to for doing a cold. I've decided, by the way, obviously to do a cold uh, trouser colour on this, so it's going to be um, obviously a grey um, going up to, to white, uh, so that'll be a quite cold colour. Uh, and then the gaiters, they're actually going to be a warm colour, which will give us our difference. So they'll still be like whitish, but they'll, they'll have that uh, warmer colour to them. And again, rather than do everything the same colour, yes, it's quicker, but it just gives you that extra, uh, you know, it's just that extra touch of, uh, you know, something. It looks that slightly bit different from, say, somebody's figures that has uh, just gone through quickly. And as I say, I can absolutely understand, understand that, you know. A lot of guys are in it for the gaming, you know. They're not, you know, they they might enjoy a bit of a paint, but it's it's more the game that they're after, which is obviously, let's face it, the end product. Whereas there'll be people like myself that it's it's more about the painting. So um, you know, obviously, you pays your money, takes your choice, really. So I think we'll leave that there for now. Now there is one bit I probably will do. This is my smaller brush. Just under the where where the the trouser goes into the into the top of the gaiters, I've seen it. I've seen it either um, on period photographs or uh, reenactors. Sometimes they look like they're socks uh, that uh, and the, and the and the stripes go horizontally rather than vertically. Um, and sometimes it's just literally they've they've pushed the the top of the the trouser into the gaiter. I'm a bit undecided there because again you you have to look at what you've actually got to play with. Or it, it it pays to to do a, just a, a bit of planning, which is quite unlike me. But you know, just just have a look. Like say here, Let's see if we can get a bit closer. Probably not. Oh, sorry guys. There we go. Um, here, there isn't going to be a lot of room to get some, even with a thin brush, to get some horizontal stripes in without them, you know, looking fairly. They'll either they're either going to end up, you know, a big blotch of blue, or um, I don't know. I just don't think they're in this case that, that there's enough room there. To make it look good, we'll see. But I'm, I'm leaning towards maybe just putting the stripe into the all the way down the trousers, and then obviously going into the gaiter. Now the haversack. I've seen lots of different colours of those, which which you'd expect. Um, I think I'm going to go with just uh, almost like the uh, the standard bread bag as I'd call it, have a sack type colour, you know, like a, not that far different, you know, a, a bit uh, a bit, bit off white or a bit like the, the um, great coat blanket roll at the top there. And I've seen that as well since painting that, I've seen this actually with a, you know, like a waterproof covering over the top, but I've also seen lots of these just as, is you know, like material, so that's why I'm going to leave that. But yeah, this guy here, I think we're going to have him we're going to have him um, a more a more uh, lighter colour. I'm just I've already got some from yesterday actually. Well, actually from last night. I this is it being a painter. <laughs> Once I'd stopped doing that, had some tea, came back up and I started on the commission work. And uh, I'm just having a look what I've actually what type of paint I've got on my palette. Uh, from last night, that if because there's a couple of colours here I could well use for that. Um, think Gav. Yeah, I don't particularly. The colours I've got would be the colours I'd actually use on the gaiters, so we don't want to do that. Uh, what colours have we got? We've got other colours that would almost represent um, what he's got on his uh, on his blanket roll, so we don't want to do that either. 
Now, what was I saying about <laughs> prior planning? <laughs> this is me all over. <laughs> Don't watch one of Gav's tutorials. You'll learn nothing. <laughs> um, right, uh, bear with me a second. I'm going through my other box of paints to see if there's something that springs to mind. They do do them in like a bluey, a bluey, uh, like a bluey grey. Um, but with the dark, the dark. See, this is where your artist, artistry, your artistic streak comes out. Where you say to yourself, "Well, he's got a dark, he's got a dark jacket, a dark jacket on. I don't particularly want to do a a dark, um, a dark colour." So I'm pulling out some beige there. Is it beige? No, it's uh, German camouflage beige. I've not used that one in a long, long time. That was going to need some vigorous shaking. Uh, got some buff, some Iraqi sand, which I believe that's not going to work. Not Iraqi sand. Some dark yellow, khaki grey. If I do khaki grey, it's too dark. As this is where you, you know, you you can have some really dark shadow areas, but you don't really want to go something that far. And to be honest with you, khaki and German camouflage beige don't look that much different, really. But we'll go with a. Go with a camouflage beige for a start. Actually, we'll use yeah, we'll use this camouflage beige, but we're going to give it a base coat of uh, again this colour. There's no point showing it again, as it says medium grey, and it's that one that so uh, you'll see it as I paint it. It's that. It's that one that's uh, never in a million years, is it uh, medium grey? I bet the I bet every single one of you, all that you tuned into these giant videos for, is just to see Gav make a complete stuff up of these blue <laughs> blue stripes. <laughs> So let's get this have a sack on first. It's quite a light colour as it's going on, but I'm hoping it will darken slightly when it when it dries. As I said before, I mean all your old timers you know all this anyway, but anybody anybody just starting taking up painting figures of you know, it doesn't have to be historical, whatever genre you're uh, sorry guys, I'm doing it all over again and I paint painting up camera um, I will get some setup as well where I can actually look at my computer my laptop that's actually on my desk and that would be a lot easier to see I mean I have got the viewfinder out on this but obviously you you've got to concentrate on your painting and you don't realize that you've gone completely off shot like I'm again doing now and it's all right saying you know or well, mark the mark your painting desk or whatever but even that doesn't particularly help, especially you know you're shaking paint up and you're you're moving moving around doing bits and pieces. It's so easy just to go off the uh, outside the view of the camera. Again, these uh, any brush with a very long point like that, it, you can damage the point by stuffing it up the the corner. On a figure, but they are good because they will reach reach the little areas that uh, you're brushing. Otherwise, we'll just overpaint everything else. I mean, I've seen these on reenactors. Um, again, it's reenactors, I know, but I've seen them uh, white and I say that bluey grey. I've seen them this soft off color beige, which I would have thought by the time you've shoved some 
greasy greasy bacon or pork in there, which was obviously a common fare, and you're uh, lying on it, resting on it, you know, as you as you take take five on a on a march. Um, I'm quite sure a lot of them started out white and ended up in this uh, this off beige colour. I'm not a hundred percent. I think this is the the wider strap should be. Go into the bag. Again, even if you don't feel you need to, just, just shake. I mean, I, I had my paint on the brush a bit too long there. Um, always, you know, flush that brush out in your water and uh, reapply fresh paint because it will dry the tip. And I usually have some uh, brush cleaner, like liquid brush cleaner, um, that I keep in a in a plastic pot, and uh, between between changes of colour, I'll I'll, I'll often uh, you know just swill swill that round just to get a lot of the paint residue off, especially off the tip. Just wonder if we go back slightly on the viewfinder. I might not. run out of a uh, camera angle. Now the water canteen was I'm painting this haversack. I've seen again lots of different ones over the years and again looking last night and this morning. <laughs> um, you know I see them in the raw the raw metal. I know they often put a, a uh, you know like a cloth cover over them to, to help keep them cool. Also, you've got the wooden ones. Um, I believe they actually preferred using the wooden ones. And as I said before, I think they, um, when they were made of fruit wood, they reckoned they tasted uh, tasted a lot better. I think I'm going to do that the raw metal. I'm just trying to debate whether they've actually because they they often have like a an imprint of swirls around them. You know where they've been stamped out, and I'm just wondering if that's got that, or if it's a cover. It does look more like a cover. Oh, decision, decision. Now I'm going to do it raw metal. Um, it'll just again with all the fabric around, it'll just give it. It'll just show that bit different. But we'll get some highlight. Another highlight on the. That bag will finish that off completely. And then before we start on the canteen, I'll do another highlight on the on the trousers. I might be able to highlight the trousers all the way up by then. I think this khaki is actually looking darker than the uh, the base coat. <laughs> Yeah, I think it is. Oh, decisions, decisions, Gav. I don't, as I say, I don't particularly want to paint it the the blue colour. Um, we'll put the we'll put this this car uh, this um, German camo beige. We'll put it in the recesses to begin with, and just see if it is darker. I believe it is. Again, because it's fresh paint, it's actually looking slightly lighter. I think what I might do is put a bit of ivory in this because I've got it on the palette so we can artificially lighten it up. I'll say again, don't feel that you've got to spring bottle after bottle, put it on your palette. Sometimes, if you've got a lighter colour, you know, there's no 
no problem in just taking a bit of that paint and adding it to your your base color or whatever you know sometimes you can get away with just painting from the base color just highlighting up by adding adding a lighter color it doesn't have to be white um, I'm putting pale sand in this that I happen to have on the on the palette have to go a bit lighter still which I don't have a problem with as I say it's more like a, a bag that started out probably fairly light whitish you know cotton colour and has just got to just got to dirty over a with oak with time I think I'll put one more scoop of lighter colour, put some more um, pale sand in that. And I think once we've done this front part, and that's our uh, bread bag. I was going to bread bag, have a sack, whatever you want to call it. Right. You can't see a great deal, especially under my lights there, but that's the, there, there is some um, highlights in there. They're fairly subdued, but they're there. Uh, again, what I normally do is once the figure's completely painted, I'll then go over you know, the entire figure, just checking it out and seeing what needs a highlight here and there. And if you've got one of these wet palettes, hopefully all your paint's still on there, so um, it's not you know, too much of a problem. Right, guys. Uh, give me five minutes to um, sort the next load of paint out, and we shall we shall start on the uh, on the trousers. Right, guys, um, we're now we're now going to do the first highlight, which is silver grey. That is, let's just get that into shots. I keep forgetting at the moment to show these ones. Um, this is just in case if English isn't your first language, at least you get the idea. We'll go fairly deep into the creases with these and just leave the, the residue. Let's get in focusing in Gav. Always tell when I've returned to the camera, I always stuff up the first few. Again, as usual, the, obviously the deepest creases will have the darkest, darkest application of paint. Trying to remember to keep just checking the the viewer here just to make sure that I am actually in in shot. 
Now what we're going to do here is do silver grey and then obviously my usual go-to which is the the tank crew white, German tank crew white um, from the Panzer Aces series uh, from Vallejo um, but any off-white will do, you know, it's uh, whatever you, you're comfortable with or what you've got on in your, your painting bottles a lot of this will probably be blotted out with the stripes and um, I know it's tempting to cut corners and say oh well because of the stripes we won't need this or we won't need that but again I'd suggest to you just, just do it it might be galling to cover some of it over afterwards with the stripes but it is what it is I mean you could probably get away with um, not so much white on these just because of the darker areas you know, there's so many creases, deep creases in this uh, but even still I'd say you know just get in the habit of doing it you know just try not to cut corners uh, because it will show up on your figure at some stage if you've got the time not to cut corners that is as I say there's loads of obviously there's loads of way of doing something and uh, obviously painting painting to get something out you know to get figures out to get an army out a unit out whatever you you're doing but you know people often say well you know I can't seem to improve my painting or I can only paint to a certain standard and that's exactly how I was painting a few years ago and it really is just going that extra you know instead of cutting a corner to, to get something out quicker uh, do it do it full on um, you'll, you'll only get better at it you know um, Yes, your speed will go up as well uh, to a degree. Uh, although uh, you know, you'll always hear me say I'm definitely not a quick painter. Uh, I mean, like the here, it's going to be. We're not exactly 100% sure without putting the the musket up to the the figure what will get blotted out here. But we've got the paint. We're painting the trousers, so let's just you know, even if it's if it's blotted out a bit by the rifle, we know we've done it. And each each bit you do, it's just constant practice all the time without you realising that you are practising. And you will be surprised how how you will come on with your painting. I I, I really do think it's to, to to get to get better you have to release yourself from the from the I must get this done quick because I need them done for a, you know a particular game or a particular army it's just how it is unfortunately you know you just you just have to release yourself from that and just say I'm going to throw all the bells and whistles at it you know if it takes me an extra half an hour or, or so per figure then that's what it does but that way your painting will improve 100% there's there's uh, yeah you know I, I believe when you get to the, like those higher echelons of painting, uh, where guys are, and gals are painting um, the busts and the large figures, and they get, they do the box art for companies and that, obviously they've reached the zenith of <laughs> figure painting. Um, but on our level here, painting war games figures, um, you know the sky's the limit. Really, you know you just have to put that extra bit of time in. And as I say, that's not knocking anybody that, that, that just wants to go down the road, route of knocking them out quick. I'm just giving you an alternative here. This is how I paint them. Um, you know, whether it's a historical figure, fantasy figure, whatever. Right, we're going straight onto the tank uniform here because I've been able to... The highlights are at these top obviously the top creases and they'll dry out quicker we're not dumping a load of paint into the deepest recesses and again here we go we're just touching the the brush really a lot of the times you don't have to worry about doing a you know a line across the ridge of a high piece of clothing piece of cloth whatever um, often that line will go off skew and, and it's just easier sometimes just put these small 
small dashes almost of painting. I call them dots, but a lot of the time they're, they're just little dashes. Just touch the, the 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 brush down onto that that particular highlight and then move on. Because what happens is then you turn the, the whole figure around once you've gone from one side of the. Because I'll, I'll work say from the right hand side trouser leg, in this case, and work my way round to the left. Um, And uh, if it takes you a couple of applications, if you suddenly say, oh, well, I could do with an extra dot here or there, um, it, it doesn't take too long. Uh, what we may well do at the end when we put our stripes in, <laughs> providing they go according to plan, uh, we might get the, 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 what I call brilliant white, you know, the, the normal just straight white paint and we might put the odd dot in it, it just depends what they look like with the stripes on. Now what I've got a feeling is going to happen is when I put the, I don't want to do a dark stripe so I've got a feeling that the paint's going to bleed through so it might take us a couple of applications just on the, the base stripe to to get it before we put our highlight on. But we may, once the stripes are on, we'll see if there are any high points that you could just do with a little, a little dot of pure white. I think that's the word we were, I was looking for, pure white. But again here we're just doing small dots almost in places. And that's, that works in itself because it, it gives you that extra, without even trying, you get that extra highlight and low light shadow areas. And again, yes, off. it does look fairly dingy and still grey looking. See now what I've done there is put a bit too much. Let's see if we can make that into something. Oh, that's not too bad. Sometimes if you put if your paint pulls a bit, you might get away like there with just uh, making it into a, what I call a false highlight. So there isn't actually a rigid cloth there, but we've now made one. It'll save uh, cleaning it up or having to put a darker colour on to break it up. I'll just do these base, uh, these bottom bits that go into the the gaiters. I'm still undecided whether I put a whether I put a horizontal blue lines into these or not, I'll, I'll probably just use them going straight down into the gator with the parent, parent material. Right, so that my friends is the, is the base done. So we've got a sky grey base then the silver grey first highlight and then the tank uniform. I've not put white in between because we are putting stripes on uh, we don't have to go uh, completely nuts with the with the highlights. Right, just bear with me a moment and I shall pick my colours for the blue. Right guys just have to uh, watch Yet more camera movement again. <laughs> Here we go. That's how far it's moved. <laughs> it sinks millimeter by millimeter. Uh, right. Um, we're going to go with um, some scale seventy-five blue here, uh, which is. Are you going to focus? Mediterranean blue scale seventy-five. That's our first, and then sky blue now. Before we go on to our figure, just as an offside, these are two. These are two different companies, both sky blue, <laughs> uh, and you can see the difference. Um, I've brought the uh, well. One I'm actually using this on the commission, the sky blue from Vallejo, uh, just in odd places. Uh, but I may look at using it as a final highlight. So it's on the table, so I might use it. Uh, but we're going to go sky blue first from 
from scale 75. Uh, I'm just looking uh, and the end, let's just have a quick squeeze. Uh, you could use the Andrea Blue from uh, from uh, Vallejo, which isn't that much different from, well, it's a fair bit different. <laughs> but yeah, you could use the Andrea Blue um, as a highlight colour and maybe uh, Prussian Blue as your, as your uh, base colour for the stripe. Now when we're doing stripes on, on trousers, now I have never done stripes on this type of material before so it's a first for me and it's all going to go horribly wrong and if it does it means just repainting the entire, <laughs> the entire trouser. Um, first of all I normally go for a centre stripe down the, down the middle uh, from the say from the belt buckle down and that gives us our stripe to work off to um, and then obviously I, t I tend to go from right to left as I would do uh, and then what I'd normally do on a straight trouser is obviously at the very base of the trousers where they touch the boot is mark a little dot uh, with the with the the base colour uh, in this case, the the Mediterranean, yeah, the Mediterranean blue. Um, and I'll do this in this case, but um, probably on the second line because the first one obviously just disappears. We are dealing with extreme, <laughs> extreme uh, for doing stripes. Uh, you know, it, we, you'd normally be trying to follow. You, you know, you don't religiously go straight down. Um, you know, with your stripe, obviously you'd fo you'd follow the folds in the, or try and follow a bit of the folds in the material. But here, if we if we do it completely, we it will throw us off all over the shop. So we've got to be a bit artistic here. Um, so normally, I put my little dot of colour. Um, in this case, not at the base of where the gator is, but probably just uh, just just um, on the top of the fold of the material. And it just gives you something for your eye to follow. You know, you're not you're not going off course. You've you've got your where you place your brush at the top, and to where it's going to go at the bottom. You can put a dot at the top as well. I just find it's easier just to the the dot at the bottom is just somewhere for me to follow my brush stroke to. Uh, don't overlay your paint. Uh, uh, sorry, overload your paint. Um, it can be handy to do one stroke. In that case, you haven't got that, you know, where you get a bulge in the middle where your paint, where your brush is, um, as, uh, as uh, you know, you've refilled your brush and you're going for the second uh, try. Uh, go for one stripe, but it doesn't matter if that stripe dries out because that's just giving you your guideline really, and then you can go for it again with a second. You know, it might take three goes just to get the base base layer on one stripe. Um, Anyway, I'm just putting the inevitable off here, so let's let's get to it. Oh dear. The joys of making videos. I can put a stripe in Napoleonic trousers up and tell you guys I did it in one hit and it might have taken me a week to do, but I uh, can't really hide, hide anything here. I've wiped a bit off my... off my brush. See already my brush is touching everything. I might go for the thinner brush. You'll have to bear with me on that. I'm not putting music on these videos. I have tried and at the moment I keep getting the, the music too loud or absolutely non-existent so there will be times where I'm holding my breath. Although they do say you shouldn't hold your breath. Um, because it makes you go more trembly. I don't know which is right. I should do it. It's just like pulling the trigger on a rifle, really. But see, this is proving problematical already. But we 
we shall persevere. Let's see where we go with it. Now these teeny thin bristle brushes, they actually work quite well because you haven't got over, I mean I've got a bit of overspill from when I put the first, the, the, the thicker brush down. And what we're trying to do is straighten the line out. Um, you'll always get a bit of clean up. Um, you know, you'll always have to go over with, say, the darker grey paint uh, if you're doing the darker on the darker colours or whatever. You know, if it's the, the sandy, more sandy paint when I'm doing the warmer colours. Right, well that's our centre, and as you can see, we've we've gone off slightly here with some with some paint. I just want to put a bit of extra up near the top where he meets the, the sash. Now we're going to do our second one. And we will pick out where we're going to go with our little dot. And we're going to remind ourselves that that's a bit of overspill on that blue paint there. It's again, sometimes you say to yourself, we will put a blue dot actually, just so we know where we are. Sometimes you, you say to yourself, oh well, I'll, I'll make them extra wide, the stripes, you know, so uh, I don't have to do so many and, and get them all wrong and all this type of thing, but... Now, don't, you don't have to have the two dots like lining up exactly because there are so many folds in the in the material uh, that they would they wouldn't exactly be now what we've got to try and do is get this replicated in the folds of the You can see I'm trying not to have the the brush uh, the stripes themselves too thick. You could go a bit thicker, and if you wanted, as we said earlier, lots of thin stripes, you could go thinner. Just caught the sash there with a bit of blue paint. Too tempting to get try and make a run with extra paint on your brush. The good thing with these very thin brushes are when you're doing stripes, they won't allow you to put a lot a lot on. I mean, I thought we'd have this difficulty where we're obviously having to continuously adjust for the folds in the cloth. And obviously this is, I mean, this is the first one I've ever done like this. Um, so things aren't always going to be perfect, especially on your first on your first figure, by the time you've done probably three or four, you'll you'll you know on the whole the the, the trousers are cast the same way, so you'll be getting to know what the where you put your stripes in the folds. say they might not be perfect um, it's just my way of doing it somebody else could hit these stripes and get them all perfect because what, what you're trying to 
not get is which happens to me from time to time and then I have to redo them is the at the base that we're working on now you'll end up bunching it's not so bad here bunch, bunching the stripes in because obviously the material is getting tucked in so it, it would be all drawn into one I suppose but um, when you're doing a straight trouser like when I'm doing French Napoleonic so I'm putting a, a stripe in you end up uh, you end up with the, the stripes too close at the bottom again what I'm just trying to do is tidy up slightly as I go Probably get these slightly better without the pressure of the camera, but I think you've got to see them warts and all, really, haven't you? And we've gone slightly over there as well. I find it's easier to, as long as the paints, the blue paint isn't obviously too wet, it's easier to clean them up as you go. And I know you're going to be putting another highlight on, and quite often I'll actually go over the, the highlights, I'll actually distort the line again. Um, but uh, I just find it's easier to clean them up as we go and as I say you may end up having to clean the same blooming stripe up a couple of times but that's just how it is it's just unfortunate we've got a type of colour that's going to take a bit of you know a couple of coats to clear up I won't go down to this. Do I down to? I keep repeating. I might try and put a blue horizontal stripe in there. Um, so we'll leave. We'll just tuck these. We'll do a blue just under here, just to if we can see. might need a bit more blue just in that little crease as I say I definitely think doing stripes on Zwarves is uh, is not going to be a quick but I mean if you're doing them to just to collect you know put a unit on your, in your cabinet um, they're always going to be a, you know especially you know the stripy trousers they're that bit different aren't they especially from a you know Civil War type uh, background Right, we're trying to imagine now where this next stripe would be. So you're going to be looking for the the next point, which would be underneath the sash. And then we'll put our dot. Where are we going to put it? We need it roughly about there, just the other side, that highlight, we think. And as I say, it doesn't matter if you've particularly if you've if you run out of paint on that first stripe, you're just looking for the direction. The first the first line I put in is gets filled out from left to right sometimes with um going off of course a bit here. But I think it's recoverable. As I say, it's not ideal to meet to, to go up the stripe if that makes sense, because you you tend to find you'll end up with a blob somewhere. But in this case, I don't think we've got much choice, I'm letting the tip dry out on my paint here. But it might have worked in our favour this time because we need to fill that stripe in.
as I say, it doesn't matter too much if the if the stripes on these particular ones are twisting around with the fabric because this particular fabric by its very nature or style of trousers, whatever you want to call it, it does twist round. Again, we're just trying to straighten the edges up slightly now. It might need a helping hand from some grey paint in a minute. I did say I'd get all this one done today. The way I'm, uh, where I'm going with these trousers, it might take me all day just to do the trousers. There's just a tiny bit of blue paint that if I can get it to, <laughs> if I can bring it in with, with the paintbrush, I won't have to use the, the grey, but it could go oh so wrong, which it doesn't, it looks like it's going okay. Alright, all we've got is that, we've got, Bear with me one second, that's the post just come through the door and my dog's just gone to retrieve it for me, so <laughs> bear with me one moment. Alright, we've got a bit we've got a bit just here that's obviously overspill. So that's gonna have to have some grey on it. That's gone quite good. We'll go back to that first bit of grey. The good thing is when you put the grey on, obviously you can see where you've where it needs re-highlighting. So if we get back in focus. We're reapplying some silver grey here. And then we've done another stripe and um, we'll uh, we'll probably put some uh, tank white on there as well. Right, so we've got three. That might need a slight tidy up as well, just there. But I think we might get away with it because it's only a tiny, tiny bit, might get away with silver grey on it. So what I'm trying to do is get this this gap. I'm not measuring it out. I don't. I mean, you could literally make a paper form. Literally, get yourself a piece of paper, uh, mark off. You know, measure it round and mark off where you want. But that's going a bit far. Uh, you might you might want to do that maybe on a on a large scale figure. But uh, on this, it's just by the eye. And as I say, what what saves is what's complicating is obviously all the ruckles in the in the trousers. But what's also saving us is the fact that uh, we've got uh, we've got that you know um we can say it's been pulled pulled about by the by the material so we've got all our lovely highlights here and now we're going to go straight over the top of them more or less. We put our small dots just under the under the material there. Now I just need to make that slightly bigger. I'm just debating whether I drop to the right or to the left with it. I think we're gonna to go to the right so we don't bunch the blue up too much. Don't want it too, too thick. Yeah, 
Yeah, that looks alright to me. And our next one, I think what I'll have to do is just under there, just throw in some grey because that's gone a bit splodgy underneath. That's actually we'll take it from that point. Yeah, that's fine. Right, let's see. Put another dot in. I see it doesn't have to be on the high point. It can anywhere where you can see it really, where you want to work to. So here we're just going to go on the underside of this uh, highlight. There's our little dot gone in. You can see it? Can we see it? Yeah, just under there. Um, and again, we pick where we. It's all under the sash here, so we can't go to the obviously to the top. And I'm going to do this just on the start on the underside of the highlight. Sometimes you'll like this one. It's quite a messy stripe. The I didn't clear off enough paint. And uh, although it's given our stripe more or less the thickness we want, it's um, of us a slightly ruckled. Give you guys the lectures of keeping your paintbrush what, moist and whatever, not drying out, and I don't follow my own advice. Just need to go a bit under that sash. Again, it's just little things, you know, you don't, you know, you, if this guy's in a, a unit, is he going to be noticed? Probably not, <laughs> that that bit doesn't go slightly all the way under there, but it's just handy. You know it's how you've done it, tidied it up. Placement. Again, we'll probably just go for the underside. That's our little dot gone in there. We'll wet our brush again, I think, because I don't think that's going to that'll dry out way before it ever gets a third of the way down. Just take the the excess paint off, and it is important to take the excess paint off when you're doing stripes because you will end up with that that telltale splodge that you see in so so many stripes. I mean, you can get away. This one here, it's moving with the cloth, so it's 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 not particularly noticeable. But you, you'll see sometimes where either people have tried to join a stripe up, um, and you end up with that telltale blob, or they've got too much paint on the the original. I think we just need to make this slightly larger so you're looking to the gap between the, the old stripe and the new one and you think well yep I've got more to play with on that side than on the other but again a thin brush like this yes you're having to make more you know more brush strokes but it's a lot more forgiving than just going running down with a larger brush and you think yep I've done that stripe because Obviously, stripes terrify people. <laughs> they terrify me. Um, we've all got enough phobias, and now we've got phobias about stri stripy trousers. I'm just checking if that... Again, what's our friend and our foe here is these different, all these, all the bagginess of, the, of these particular types. Because you can say that well, your stripes moving with the material, but at the same time, you don't want it too, you know, snaking like a river too much. I think this guy, the next one. 
is going to probably be, looking at the distance, we're going to probably drop him just the other side of this highlight, so actually in the deepest shadow area of this, right underneath the bayonet. There isn't a lot to do there. Might not be a lot to do, but I'll still uh, put a too big a splodge, and that was again not following my own advice. I hadn't wiped the the tip of the brush off. Might need a bit of a clean up just to straighten that up a bit, but we'll just get underneath it first. See, I was almost doing it again. get our grey in again, although it's, it, I've put a, quite a bit of paint on there so it might actually, oh it's not too bad, sometimes you, the paint can still be wet, obviously just blow on it, you know, with your breath or uh, put your hair dryer on it and uh, you're, you're good to go, it's just I don't want to keep turning the video off to put hair dryers on, let's just see if we can get, I'm just trying to work out because my lights, as I say, the camera's blocking my light out a bit, so uh, it's not as bright as it could be, but I think we're going to have to just go under there slightly. Yeah, that'll do us. Again, we're going to find out. Now we've got a lot, this is where it, it not so we go terribly wrong, but we've got a lot more sweep of the the material here to do so where are we going to go we're going to go a bit higher with our dot on this and we'll put him close in I'm thinking we're going to have it coming down this this high point here to meet us because the, the materials again it's swaying in I don't know what other way to explain it. See, the paint's running out, but that's not a problem at all because it's giving you your baseline stripe. What I might do is just move out very slightly. So given it's so we can see what We'll just put some wipe some axis off. So we're now going to go without going completely probably over that line. We're going to sit it just back slightly. Now this is now I'm not going to try and join um, where we've got the gap from the bottom from our little dot down here to the top where I've run out of paint. I'm going back up to the top. And the crease wants to throw my paintbrush off, see slightly. Because although we've got our, our white fabric is going to be showing up there, again, no, the, 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 the material is actually pulling in, so you can be forgiven for having, having that gap slightly less between the stripes. I think we're getting on target now. That's one of the people have been kind enough in the past to say when I've done stripes on the polionic figures, oh, I, you know, I don't know how you do it. I, I, you know, it's uh, I couldn't do stripes like that. It just proves you can because Gav has to keep tidying them up. <laughs> it's not always, it's not always like you know some magical art where you know you're blessed with being able to do a stripe on a trouser. Um, a lot of the time, it is just fixing up. And you've just got to be prepared to do it. Uh, sometimes you'll get them. They are a lot easier, obviously, on a on a straight. I, I reckon actually, if you all go out and get some zouaves, whether they're the plastic ones or these metal ones, um, go out and get some zouaves. By the time you've painted stripes on them, you'll be an expert when it comes to doing, say, Napoleonic stripy trousers or any others for that matter. <laughs> Maybe on pirates or something. Must admit, I was looking at the uh, 
the foundry pirates and I'm quite taken with those I wouldn't mind getting a pack and, uh, and painting those up I think that's not too bad just have to get some more paint on the palette as I'm almost running out I was having a look at the um, going back to the hat I thought the hat was yellow well it is for the it seems to be for the uh, Union uh, Zouaves and these guys seem to have them as red or blue so I was thinking maybe blue just to break the red up a bit just as an aside because it's taken ages to get round to, the, to this other to the front oh, the, don't forget we've still got a, we've got a couple of dabs of uh, dabs of highlights to go on these blue stripes yeah as well um, right and again this is really pulling into the centre where the legs where the fabric almost joins so Let's try and be a bit careful. Um, the paint will be drying out on the tip here as I speak. Just wondering on this next leg, if we go about there. See again, I'll see, you've missed all that on camera there, but you can just see a tiny little blue dot there. Quickly get this in the water. Um, yeah, I've put my little tiny dot there, and then we've just got to try and work to it. You could put a blue top, obviously we've gone back to now where there's an open area here, you could put a blue dot at the top, but I think by the time we've done this many stripes now on, I don't even know what number stripe this is on here now, so I think we'll be all right. Well, let's go in the top of the fabric, it's going to have to be cleaned off. I might get away with it because the fabric is, again, pulling in. Let's have a look. But again, we've just got our dot. We've got our. We know roughly where our stripes going. I'm trying to get underneath this this crease. This is the only problem when you go under a crease and then you've got to go uphill, underhill with these stripes. It's, uh, it does throw it does throw your end point off. That's why you could do with just putting that dot in. So you know if you're hitting your mark or not. So there's nothing worse than you do your trousers and they look all great at the top and when you get to the bottom they've all bunched up to literally all the blue stripes or the red stripes all merging into one. Turn it off uh, camera again. I'm just trying to get the batteries about to go, so I'm just trying to get this before I move the camera and swap batteries. And we've broadened the stripe again. I did look at the cuffs as well, um, and some of the artwork I've seen have shown um, the red around the very edge of the cuffs, but I've also seen period photographs where they haven't, and I've seen reenactors with them where they haven't. So um, I'm leaving those cuffs without a red edge to them, just having the piping at the top. Right, bear with me, guys. I've just got to change this battery over. Right, right, guys, one battery change later. And whether I've got a nasty feeling it takes ages to charge. I've got two batteries and it takes ages to charge them up. Um, probably takes an hour or more to, to charge one battery. So I had said that I'd probably get 
this all up today, but I've got a nasty feeling that um, we'll get as far as doing stripy trousers and a bit extra, and that's uh, where we'll end up leaving it. Right, we're going to do another another stripe. Now this is where you're hoping, as you as you slowly crawl round to the other side of the figure. that where you've put that centre line when you first started out you're not going to be too far either too far bunched up with it or too far away you know where you've got one piece of fabric that is extra wide sometimes you just have to you know blow out your cheeks and just say <laughs> enough's enough I can't you know and that's gnawing away at my insides at the moment thinking oh you watch we're going to get around <laughs> doing this on video we can get around the other side and we're going to be a mile away or butted up way too close to the other one but I won't really know until we're, we're there but as I say I reckon if you can do if you can do stripes on this guy you can do stripes on on any type of material you know jackets if you're doing Edwardian steampunky type stuff, whatever, you know, say pirate trousers, which are a bit like this, baggy and that. As I say, just put your little dot where you you, you want your final brush strokes to meet. Whether you take a breath as you do your your stripe or not is entirely up to you. I tend to. <laughs> just I think it's just natural. You're holding your breath and hoping it works. I mean, in retrospect, I probably should have done all the stripes off camera. It's not so boring for you guys because it is taking ages. But I just think, you know, I've painted all the other figure in real time. I might as well do these. That's annoying. I've just tried to broaden the stripe slightly, but I've just gone slightly over the very top piece. Amazing when you concentrate and you start whispering, it's like you're trying to phot photograph uh, lions on the Serengeti or something. <laughs> it's, uh, so I apologise if I start going off into whispers. Again, our base colour is our friend here and uh, he's cleaning up quite nicely actually. I was a bit worried that you know the darkness of the blue that uh, any overspill would be an absolute pain to get off but at the moment because it is literally we're using this little brush and it is literally small amounts it's uh, it's working for us. slowly getting to the other side find our next little place to put our little dot and again it's just watching where the fabric where you think the fabrics flowing and you know you're not trying to do an exact straight line or something like this because it wouldn't be so, you know, don't get yourself too worked up if your line isn't straight or we've got a bit of overspill there, but we've got to fill that in anyway and we'll see what's left to clean up. Some of this is going to obviously be covered by the, by the musket butt. I'm doing all this off camera again, aren't I? Sometimes I have to though, just to move around. Um, I mean, I'm getting cramp in my fingers now because I'm doing all these stripes. I 
As I say, I know a lot of the guys do the music as an infill, you know, when there's, there's quiet times. I might look at it, but uh, I'll just set on these as as more like rambles, you know, almost like, you know, we're all painting together or, in Rusty's case, coding together, <laughs> whatever, <laughs> whatever, uh, whatever you're doing. It's more of a ramble. Um, with obviously a, a bias towards painting techniques rather than just just chatting about things in general, but uh, rather than just doing, you know, as I say, and I still might do some in the in the way of, you know, saying right, this is the highlight I'm using on this, or this is the base coat. All oh, right, this is the jacket now painted. You know, I might do some like that. Um, to cut the time down because it's it's also uploading them it's I've got fairly decent broadband so it's not it's not it's not the the, the upload speed it, it's it's more the fact that because I'm having to do these in in several several segments um, I can't do anything else compute you know uh, where I'm painting you know yeah I then take my brushes up and I'll start doing my commission or Whatever I'm, you know, something I'm painting for myself or painting to sell or, or, you know, whatever. But I, um, I can't use my my laptop, which is on my desk, which is what I use all the day. Um, so you know, when I did that rifleman on, was it uploaded the four on Saturday? Three, four, I can't remember. Um, you know, that took what three? Yeah, it probably took about three hours in total for for everything to go up, which. It isn't huge in the scheme of things, but I said just logistically, they're they're just when you do these type of things, it just it does take a lot of your time up. And that's why I thought with this this guy, probably some others in the future, uh, why not just just yeah, I know it's not a complete series in one day, but it's just easy for me to upload. You know, I uploaded those two yesterday. I'm not sure how, obviously, I, I've got a feeling I'm not going to see the end of this one today, which is what I plan to do. I mean, I'm doing this and to, to make up for the time I've not been painting my commission, I'm doing extra hours in the evening, or at night, I should say, to uh, make up the time on the commission. As I say, just because of taking time away from the... I mean, this is full time. This is part of the... I suppose you can say, you know, well, Gav, you're a commercial painter, so it lifts your profile and all this type of stuff. So I'll take it. You know, it is, it is work to a degree. Um, but obviously, because they do take so long to, to do in real time, um, I'm not going to promise I can do one every week. They will be as and when I, I've either got the time or the inclination to do one. I mean, in a lot of ways, once you've done one, as a tutorial, once you've done a couple, you know, people get the basics. You know, there's not not much else you can really tell them really. But at the same time, it's just uh, as I say, it's just put these up they're more like painting rambles than tutorials I much prefer to, to paint to other people painting um, or scale modeling which is obviously another enjoyment of mine I tend to find when the scale modelers they tend to do a lot longer videos which I enjoy say to anybody else out there is uh, is thinking of uh, you know well, should I do a channel or not I'd give it a go it's um, it's 
it's not as hard as you think. Well, it's hard for me because I've got no, no IT skills whatsoever, but <laughs> it's not actually hard to upload videos, as you all know. If you're like me, starting to get an old boy, um, you know, you don't always have the IT skills in that, but it really doesn't take a lot to upload a video. People are always interested. Um, they don't. You have to interact with people if you if you want your channel to grow. You know, um, you get a lot of people. They seem to give up after. You know, they don't have. You know, they think, oh, there's not enough people commenting or liking. You know, I'm feeling I'm doing it for nothing. Well, unfortunately, you know. You, it's life's like that. You've you've got to put a fair bit into it. I mean, my channel's been going a few years. Um, I have not exactly got a stellar sub count. I'm always grateful to the people that do. Um, but uh, you know, I don't particularly chase chase the the subs. It's just it's just enjoyable. In, you know, I've got health problems. It's just enjoyable for me to knock out a video. Um, And like I say, if you're in the same boat, you know, you've got an interest in painting or modelling, then uh, think about doing a channel, not just, you know, you know, join joining YouTube so you can comment, but maybe think about about sticking a video up. You know, they don't have to be all singing or dancing. Yeah, we'd all like all the all the bells and whistles, all the extra lights and microphones and things you tend to find a lot of people like me where your income's limited you know you you just build it up you know how you know as long as it takes really i suppose but on the whole it's a it's a decent community um you know people often go about the trolls and and whatever well, they're not really part of the community, are they? They're just there to <laughs> to get their kicks. So, you know, don't don't worry about that type of thing. Just let that pass you by. Um, but the 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 people on here that that you, you make you meet some good people. You know, whether it's uh, whether it's people with um, their own channels, or whether it's people. It's people um, that have just got you know putting comments up. You get a lot of you get a lot of good, good you know stuff flowing backwards and forwards. Whether it's just you know sometimes it can be a helpful advice. Sometimes it's just interaction. Now I said earlier about joining stripes up. This is a case where it's actually not a problem because, and the, I know what you're going to say, Gav's looking for excuses. <laughs> I'm not. It's uh, in this case we've got our, our stripes joining up here, but as far as I can see, because our legs on the backward trail, um, this section of fabric is is not separate but you understand me it's it's i know what i'm on about it's actually on a different uh trajectory or whatever you want to call it so i don't actually have a problem on that score because again the, the fabrics rockling up now don't get me wrong it can be a problem <laughs> Um, when you're doing a straight line and that all happens and all happens down the bottom but I think on this case we're all right with it now we're just gonna have to tidy that last one up slightly because it's I've tried to get it to sweep in under the under the fab follow the fabric as it trails back under his leg I'm just not sure if we're going too thin at the top and too fat at the bottom so bear with me a second while I i work this out. Again, you can't see it because I've already got obviously all the other stripes in, but the fabric is quite 
it, it, the, the folds are quite dense near, also near the top where it's dragged into the uniform so it would be thinner as it goes under the folds of the fabric I might just separate that with some grey again see how it looks Right, that's our, our base. Up close it looks a bit rough, but it doesn't actually look too bad. Famous last words when it's <laughs> it's a good good few few feet away from you. Um, what we're gonna do now, I've already got some on my palette. I'm gonna put a few highlights in. It won't take you as long to do that because you are only putting them up on the raised areas. Uh, let's have a look. Not even sure how this. Oh, it's not too bad. I was a bit concerned it, it might not be light enough on because we've got obviously if you get a darker blue background um, and you could you could get some darker paint and just put some dots even in the, the farther recesses if 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 you think it needs it. Could play around if I really need to with that uh, Vallejo sky blue. What I try and do is leave if I can, not always possible, but leave the darker blue outline either side of the highlight. It's a bit artificial, but um, again, it's a bit more arty farty, I suppose. But. The only problem is taking time looking around where to put the highlight, your paint dries out. Again, a lot of that's going to be probably covered by the, the musket. Sorry guys, this might go out of shot because I'm trying to, trying to reach the high point. I'm not sure if that Vallejo highlight might not be too too light for this, but I might just try it. Still got to decide whether we're going to do those horizontal stripes, which I'm probably going to have a go at. I don't think it'll take too much to wipe them out and start again if uh, if they don't look right. I just don't know if there's enough fabric there to play with. Right, um, I'm just going to break that sky blue out from Vallejo. I don't, as I say, I, I very rarely use it, and the bit I had used on the palette, I've used up. It's a very, very, very near it shaking now. It's it's um it's not a particularly thick paint. And the one thing you don't want when you're doing your highlights is um. 
is it running all over the place? Because that will spoil your day really. You've then got to, you've usually got to. Now I'm not even going to add water to this. It's that it's that uh, watery already. Um, let's just see if it's worth it. The paint's so light it might, as in already. I don't know if this is going to make much difference. It's not too bad actually. Yeah, we'll give that a go. We'll use that in a couple of places. But yeah, you know, if you, if it, if you do go outside of your your dark your base stripe when you when you're doing your highlights, um, you just have to take a breath, uh, clean it up from the outside. Well, I'd actually put your put your dark darker tone, you know, your base coat back over it to tidy the line up, and then get your grey out and or whatever colour you happen to have as, a, as your white and uh, but as I say if you can put the highlight uh, so that the base coats either side of it it makes it stand out slightly better not so much on this because we've got quite light blue stripes here um, it, it doesn't work as efficiently as, as maybe doing the red but or a dark blue stripe but um, it'll still pay dividends for you 